mind if we stop by the waterfall on this trip? I could use a few moments to unwind. Captain! Over here! The workup's in the cabinet's hands. They said they'll call for us once they've gotten to properly review it. But, listen, I know I should have been more forthcoming about who I was earlier. So, in the interest of full disclosure, there's one more thing you ought to know before we head up there. My relationship with the UC. It's more complicated than it might seem at first glance. The UC's actually the only reason I'm here in the first place. I... I'm a clone of a man named Francois Sanon, one-time fleet admiral of the UC during the Colony War, former head of the UC Navy. They called him Ve Victus. Woe to the defeated in Old Earth Latin, a title he earned. The program I was a part of, it was the UC's attempt to create a new generation of military minds from one of their most respected tacticians. Secure the leadership of the UC military for generations to come. A non-trivial amount of gene editing. Clone, honestly, isn't even really the right term for our relationship, thanks to the amount of donor material that was required to bring me into this world. He and I are different on more than a few levels, but there's no denying the fact we're inextricably linked. I'm the last. A few of my siblings, they passed when we were young, training accidents and the like, but most of the rest were deployed to the front lines during the colony war, and they never came back. Not a day goes by where I don't think about what the world would look like with them still in it. He would have happily told you he was one of the greats. Ultimately, though, it didn't matter. The man I was cloned from, my father, was executed for acts he committed during the war. The man caused a lot of death on both sides. Freestar Collective, and you see, military and civilians. And the things he did, well, they're a part of the reason the UC and Freestar Collective aren't really on great terms to this day. So my involvement, it could be another obstacle they throw at us up there. I just wanted you to be forewarned. I, I really appreciate you saying that. I just thought you deserve. You know, while we've got a second, was there anything else? We or if you've got any... No telling how long the cat... Then I guess it's just a map. The cabinet meeting is about to begin. All parties, please proceed to the cabinet chambers. You must be the captain Hadrian mentioned in her report. You have our thanks for the risks you faced in securing this information. Oh, I'm sure she did. Yes, well precisely how urgent is what I hope will determine here today. So now, we have two petitioners here making a surprising request. Access to the UC Xeno Warfare Team's Terramorph data, currently housed in the Armistice Archives. A request which will require not just this body's agreement, but that of all three Armistice signatories. UC, Freestar Collective, and House Varun. Now, Captain, we've all read Hadrian's report on the subject, but we have yet to hear from you. Perhaps you could summarize for the Cabinet what it is you see as the goal of this endeavor. Hmm, that is something to consider. 
though we also have to take into account the nature of the data you require. Madam President, I object to the very premise of this meeting. While no one would argue that what happened on Tau Ceti was anything less than a tragedy, terror morph attacks are not some sudden new threat on the horizon. They've been happening for generations. To demand, we hand over banned archival knowledge and possibly upset the balance of galactic diplomacy because of a single attack. Seems at best panic. And at worst, a power grab by the daughter of a bloodthirsty warmonger and her associates. I would remind the chief diplomat who he's speaking to. If it's my father you're looking to address, you're welcome to consult a medium. I would also ask, how many deaths the cabinet requires to act? Fifty? Fifty thousand? Because if tragedies like Tau Ceti are just prelude to more attacks, I have no doubt you'll get the body count you require. Let's keep this civil, shall we? And while there should be no doubt, the preservation of life stands paramount among this body's duties. Chief Yassin has a point. Will a single attack, however troubling, be sufficient to convince the other factions to grant us access to what they no doubt consider weapon data? I don't think it's enough. Perhaps you can help, Captain. As the one who actually collected the sample in question, did this terramorph seem at all alarming to you? That is worth considering. This attack took place on an almost completely uninhabited world. The casualties were minimal as a result. But if there's another attack, will we be so lucky? Hmm. Yes, a fine point, Admiral. So then, Captain, given the discussion now and the information you've been privy to thus far, if you were in our position, would you grant the request made to open the archives? I'm uncomfortable opening the archives without gathering more information. However, if that's the path forward you prefer, then so be it. I'm inclined to agree. As am I. Uh, I suppose that does get to the heart of the point, doesn't it? Very well. I consent. The galaxy was lucky you were here today, Captain. You and I are in agreement, Chief Diplomat. So, if there are no other objections, I believe we can agree to give our full backing to make the request to... <gasps> what was that? Chief Sarkin, what's happening? There's been an attack at the spaceport. Terramorphs. Terramorphs? More attacks. Just as predicted. Good God. Damn it. They're here. Now. There. There must be another explanation. The creatures evaded our scanner somehow. There will be plenty of time for conjecture later. Chief Sarkin, order the evacuation of the spaceport and have your men contain the things, but do it discreetly. The last thing we need is a citywide panic. Yes, ma'am. Admiral Rogan, the local barracks can provide support? I'll make the order myself. The nearest anti-Xeno squad, though, is off-world. It's going to take a while to bring them in. Well then, we'll have to make do with the tools we've got. You too. We can't risk those things getting out of the spaceport. I want you both on the next train there. We'll let them know you're coming, and that you've dealt with these things before. Now go show them how it's done. We're on it, ma'am. Captain, right behind you. Let's get down. For the attack to happen so quickly, something doesn't add up here.
you for what you did. The way those people were acting. I've seen... I... I don't know. We'd tried, but some of the other officers down there... Fermonic projection. Some terramorphs, they can... It affects everyone different. You kill the morph, you break the hole. Let's do it. Nat's unlocked. Please, do it. No time to waste, Captain. Stash the EM and pull some firepower. Let's move! An evacuation order has been issued for the Spaceport okay. District. All citizens are required to proceed to the nearest shelter. Got the remaining creatures locked down on the land pad. We're barely holding up for him They said you've done this before. Well, one fire team to spare and whatever supplies you need, but I, I can't risk them taking over any more men. Put those things down and do it fast. We, we'll hold them as best we can. For some backup. You, you two have any experience with Terramorphs? Only the brief they just gave on the way here. Surviving a full on. We're not UC security. Roger that. We're. Stay sharp.
gonna save you! If these things reached the populated areas of the city, we would have had an absolute massacre on our hands. Hmm. I guess they weren't kidding about you too. Universe put the right people in the right place. Hmm. Certainly doesn't feel like it. I don't want to think what would have happened if you two hadn't been here. Just glad we could rise to the occasion. Captain, we should report back to the President. Let her know the Terramorphs have been dealt with. Take care of yourself, Sergeant. They said you're free to come and go. That's a relief to hear. Thank you, gentlemen. Captain? Anyone in the line Hadrian? Is a trap. It would appear that the Cabinet owes you our thanks for what you did for the city today. Happen again. As well as an apology. Your concerns about the Terramorphs? Well, consider them validated. Thank you, ma'am. Of course. I only wish we could have acted sooner. Now, today's events have only clarified our path forward in the eyes of the Cabinet. You will have our full support in collecting the Terramorph data from the Archives, as well as a subsequent investigation into the nature of these attacks. But to accomplish those goals, we're going to need the right people in the right places. As such, the Cabinet has authorized me to reinstate you, Hadrian, effective immediately, to your former rank of Major. As soon as we've got the data in hand, we want you investigating these attacks and how to stop them. Will you do this? I... Y yes Yes, ma'am. I'd be honored. Excellent. But as you've both made clear, for such an investigation to succeed first, we're going to need someone to convince the Free Star Collective and House Varun to play ball. Someone who knows precisely the sorts of dangers the colonies and all the galaxy are facing right now. 
The cabinet wants you, Captain, to be that representative. We do. In exchange, we're willing to fast track your citizenship upon collection of the data. So, will you help us? I'm glad to hear it. Now, we, of course, won't be sending you in without the proper support. Deputy McIntyre in the Office of Interstellar Affairs will be your guide on gaining access to the archives. You should be able to find her in her office across the hall. And on behalf of the whole of the United Colonies, you have our thanks. We are dismissed. Damage to the space I'm going to check in with Chief Engineer Kulkarni. Start getting a plan we together for that day. We by sitting on our laurels. Our laurels, in fact, became uninhabitable a long time. Make sure they get what they require. That must make you my vanguard captain. Welcome to Interstellar Affairs. I'm Deputy Chief Diplomat McIntyre, Chief Yassine's second in command. I heard you were instrumental in protecting the city from the attack. You have my gratitude. I was also informed that you gave quite the presentation to the cabinet. Chief Yassine wants you to know the Interstellar Affairs Office is fully committed to this endeavor. Accessing the Terramorph data and beyond. We're going to do everything in our power to make sure you have the tools you need. And that means first getting you into the Archives. You do know what the Archives are, correct? Hmm. Someone paid attention in current events. So... Then you also know that it was originally managed by the three major galactic players. Access to the archives is only granted in cases of dire emergency and requires a one-time use code from each of the three armistice signatories. UC, Freestar Collective, and House Varun. Now, the UC is already on board, so that means we'll need to convince two people, the ambassadors of the Freestar Collective and House Varun, to hand over their codes. Get them both and you'll have your data. But that's a lot easier said than done. I couldn't agree more. However, both ambassadors have reasons they won't, or can't, work with us. Now, I'll provide guidance on how we believe you can acquire each code, but ultimately, it'll be up to you to get them both to cooperate. And I do mean cooperate. Threats and violence are off the table here. Though that doesn't mean we can't get creative. But it does mean we need to get you up to speed on who you're dealing with. Who do you want to start with? Ambassador Radcliffe of Freestar or Ambassador Balmore of House Varun? Ambassador Balmore's a challenge. When the rest of House Varun retreated into seclusion shortly after the signing of the armistice, Balmore stayed here. He's since lent his support to a small number of archival requests, so there's real hope he might again. Though claiming to know how a member of House Varun thinks is a quick way to earn yourself a psych eval. It does, but there's a concern. We're not 100% sure Balmore is actually still alive. His public appearances were always rare, but it's been several years now since he last poked his head out. Scans of the facility show life signs, but not the kind we were expecting. Your task is to find him and kindly but firmly remind him of his duties under the armistice. It would at least be a speedier negotiation, but I, of course, hope the Ambassador is alive and well. Now, the Embassy front door isn't an option, but our spies have stated there's a side entrance that should allow you access. Here. This device should get you all the way down to the Embassy interior. Once you're inside, though, finding the Ambassador is going to be up to you. And fair warning, we received a report that alarms might have been tripped inside the Embassy during the attacks. 
Watch out for automated security in there. Ah, the good Ambassador Ratcliffe. She's a veteran of the Colony War, and her only goal in life is to make ours miserable. If Sam is any example of how stubborn the Freestyle people can be, then I can imagine how difficult it must be dealing with this Ambassador. Now, officially, our office is suggesting you try and negotiate with her. Use your experiences as a member of the military and with the threat we're facing to convince her to lend her support. And who knows? Maybe that'll work. Stranger things have happened. But my suspicion is we're going to have to rely on other tools to get her code. Certainly. See, good diplomacy is all about the careful application of pressure. We just need to find the squeeze. UC Intelligence has a recording device planted in the Ambassador's living quarters, which we suspect you can use to your advantage. But getting caught trespassing is a quick way to land yourself in an embassy holding cell. So, if you are going to try and access the device, you're going to need to find a way in there without being seen. Now, we recovered some intel we believe should be able to help with that. But there's also a disgruntled staff member you might be able to pump for information. Maybe even convinced to work with you. Yes, many. Don't steal anything. Don't get caught anywhere you're not supposed to. Absolutely do not harm anyone. If something goes wrong, we'll do our best to smooth things over. But I can't make any promises. Name's Cameron Long. He's younger than Ratcliffe, bears less of a grudge towards the UC. He works closely with the Ambassador, making him a promising source for information on the ins and outs of Embassy life, and someone who very likely hates her guts. All right. Here, your diplomatic ID. I'll give them a heads up, you're on your way. Not likely to let you through the door otherwise. And take these. Chief Yassine wanted you to have some options on how to proceed in there. Now, if you have additional questions or require clearance for a new approach we haven't already discussed, don't hesitate to ask. I'd suggest you start with Ambassador Radcliffe. Approach her while the attack is still fresh in her and her staff's mind. Be smart out there, Captain.